In understanding the history of your chosen path, you need to have a firm foundation of your belief structure. The reason this is important is because without a good foundation, your entire belief system is shaky. It is important that you can clearly define what it is that you believe, what you believe in, and why you believe in it, but also how and when this system came about. In understanding these things, you can achieve a better respect for your system of beliefs, and others will be able to respect your choice of path as well. Many times I get people asking, what is witchcraft and wicca all about? People are curious as to what it is we do, and why we do it, and the ways that we perform rituals, the why, where, who, when, and what to our system of beliefs gives us a clear understanding and makes it easier for us to explain things to others who are interested. When we can discuss the facts, not only do we come across as intelligent, but credible. When we research the history of Wicca, witchcraft, and paganism, I have noticed that there are many times when these terms get swapped for each other. A point I try to make very clear is that even though these three ideas are similar, and the histories do cross from time to time, these are three very independent ideas, and each have its own rich history. Picking through all of the misinformation and confusion can be difficult work, but once you have a clear understanding of the differences and similarities of these three ideas, you will be able to understand clearly what it is that you believe in. Paganism is a generalized term and that tends to cover a very broad spectrum of spiritual and cultural practices or beliefs stemming from folk religions and polytheistic religions in particular. Most of the time it defines all faith traditions outside the monotheistic religion uh, groupings of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Religious practices that fall under paganism include Hinduism, uh, Native American, Shinto, as well as uh, other ethnic religions such as Druidism, Voodoo, Hoodoo, and most recently Wicca. The main character, character, characteristics sorry, of pagan tradition is the absence of polytheism and the presence of a living mythology which explains the religious practice. Now in understanding the term pagan we have to look to the Latin paganus which is an adjective which meant rule rustic or of the country. As a noun it means country dweller or villager as the people who tended to follow the pagan religions uh, were seen as the uneducated country folk or hicks uh, when Christianity became a popular religion of choice. However, uh, the semantic development of the meaning non-Christian or heathenistic is unclear uh, many believe that this term came about in the 4th century. It is understood that uh, those who lived in the country became synonymous with the idea that they were non-Christian as the early Christian churches were entirely urban, which makes sense as the Christian churches would have been built in the largely populated cities opposed to the hard-to-get country areas. Uh, this would make Christianity more accessible to city dwellers as the early Christian missionaries tended to focus their efforts in the heavy populated cities. Now, according to the Oxford Dictionary, the term heathen 
arose from another interpretation of Paganus, which denoted a person who was not of the city or not of a particular class of people. However, the term of pagan to describe a particular type of religion was not used before the 17th century. So, as we understand that paganism represents a large group of religions outside the monotheistic religions, it is also used to describe those who had no specific religious beliefs, and therefore can also mean atheism. So, we understand that a pagan believes in many deities or no deities at all. We also understand that pagans were farmers and hunters and followed the patterns of when to harvest, when to plant, and what would grow, and what game to hunt. They took their cues from nature and celebrated the changing of the seasons, as well as the moon's changes. They saw that there were times when both day and night were equal, where one night was longer than all the others, and one night was shorter than all the others, and they considered these to be sacred times. Paganism is an ancient form of religion, which we can date back to the very early period between uh, 35,000, 10,000 BC, as there have been artifacts found all over Europe that date back to such times, many, uh, mainly the artifacts depicted motherly figures, the most famous being the Venus of Willendorf, which has many anthropologists drawing the conclusion that the main focus was a female deity. Unfortunately, with the lack of historical texts being found intact and translatable, we can only reconstruct these ideas to the best of our ability. During the Paleolithical period, uh, we find the appearance of burials. Uh, where we cannot say that this was due to a form of religious view, we can consider this a form of ceremony, and it can be viewed as a belief in the afterlife. Also showing a form of ritual was the finding of the red ochre and ornaments that were found in conjunction to the burials. Um, so... As time progressed, we see many cultures showing more spiritual and religious practices. Many of these religious practices included many offerings to different gods and goddesses. Uh, the oldest recorded would be the Celts, whose record record over 400 deities. We understand that many of them are not mentioned more than once, but they did serve a purpose and possibly were transformed into more widely used deities. From the Celts, we get the Druids, and the Druids focus mainly on nature. Unfortunately, there is not much known facts on the Druids, only assumptions on what the system of beliefs are, as most of the documentation on this sect was falsified or destroyed. The Greek and Roman cultures also had a form of spirituality, which falls under what we now term classical religions. The belief of the Romans, however, did not have a known form of religion until after they conquered Greece and they took over the Greek religious system and renamed the deities of the Greek pantheon. Uh, this is why many of the Greek and Roman deities are similar to each other. It is because they are the same, only the name has changed. Uh, the, this pattern we find throughout history. The only difference between the two uh, pantheons is Roman had a creation god of Janus, where the Greeks did not have a creation god, and the Greeks used the myths of the gods to give examples of human behavior and what was acceptable where and what was not, where the Romans glorified the deity's heroism, bravery, and duty. Having a hundreds and thousands of deities, the Egyptians are probably the most polyestic uh, pagans known, where they had the focus of Isis, Orisis, and Horus. They had multitude of others for every part of life. 
They also show the duality that most pagan traditions are known for, as they have Ra, the god of the sun, they have the opposite, who is Neith, who was the goddess of the night. Uh, this is a very important understanding, as pagan and polyethic religions, the focus of duality and balance, uh, that without one, we can't have the other. This is a factor in all pagan religions that we find a common thread. In the Middle Ages, when Christianity became the religion of choice for many, pagan religions tended to grow underground. Many temples of pagan worship were destroyed by those who used Christianity as a form of control. Christianity started out as a wonderful religion. Unfortunately, many people used Christianity and turned it into something else, changing the meanings of the literature and the belief system into different interpretation that they used to their advantage. Because of this, many people who still practiced the polyethnic religions were called evil. Many times were jailed and tortured or killed because they continued to practice. The fear that they had no control over the pagan population and the greed that fed the struggle of the Christian faith had turned into something that started out as a loving and good and positive religion into one that still today carries out many barbaric and negative fueled ideas. Because of the greed and the fear today, many people who follow the Christian faith have been misinformed about the pagan traditions and, to, and due to this have a negative view of these religions. In um, 1324, that's where the start of what is known as the burning times. The burning times were the years which anyone who did not conform to Christian rule were tortured and killed. Many times people who were accused of these quote-unquote crimes against the church were innocent and were actually Christian. However, they were different, possibly handicapped, have an illness, or had property that someone else wanted, or you were a strong-willed woman. During this time, all one had to do was accuse someone of what they termed witchcraft, and the person accused was immediately taken into custody. The most well-known instructions on the prosecution of what they termed as witches, the Malleus Milfalcum, which is also known as the Witch's Hammer, was published in 1486 by two German monks, um, Henrik Kramer and Jacob Springer. However, many theologians found the text to be too gruesome and refused to have anything to do with it. Unfortunately, the two monks went ahead with their hunt and got the tome out to some other people who, under the stress of fear and ignorance, put the instructions to use. And this was not discovered until 1898. So for 200, or for 400 years, this was not necessarily known by the church. Some church churches did use this instruction, but not all Christian sects were aware that certain groups were using the witch's hammer. So it wasn't all Christians, just just a few narrow-minded ones who wanted that control and used this instruction book. Uh, there was so much fear caused by the authority of the church that many people were killed. And in fact, it was found in 1585 that there were two villages in Germany that in each village there was only one female inhabitant left after the witch trials. In 1601, King James passed his Witchcraft Act, which caused many pagans to flee to the New World where they found the Native Americans to have some very similar views in, tra in their tradition. In uh, 1736, King James's Witchcraft Acts 
was replaced with a new act that stated there was no such thing as witchcraft. And anyone claiming to have supernatural or occult powers was considered to be a fraud. And this actually lasted until 1951, when finally all the laws against what was now known as witchcraft were repealed. Now, let me stop here for a moment. Uh, during the history of paganism, we sort of transitioned into what is commonly called witchcraft. And there was a lot of confusion in what was considered witchcraft during these times, what was called witchcraft, was actually not witchcraft at all. It was simply pagan religious practices. In uh, Dr. Margaret Murray's papers, The Witch Cult in Western Europe and The God of the Witches, she was not describing witchcraft, but paganism. Uh, where Gerald Gardner continued his discussions on witchcraft and creating uh, what is now known as Wicca, he, too, was mainly discussing paganism. Witchcraft is a whole other kettle of fish. When we discuss witchcraft's history, we first need to define what witchcraft really is. Now, if we look at the Oxford University Press's they describe it as the power to do harm or influence nature through occult means. Now, where this is somewhat true, the part concerning occult means is misleading, um, as is the term of witchcraft. I find the simple term of the craft is much more accurately, mainly because the term witch has so many negative connotations to it. Now, throughout history, the term witch has been given such an ugly definition. Again, mainly to put fear into pagans. The term witch actually derived from the Saxon word wick, which translates to wise. In the time before physicians and hospitals, modern medicine townsfolk would rely on the wisdom of the town healer. Now, usually this was a woman, sometimes a man, who had the understanding of healing with herbs and items found just right around wherever they were. Uh, the term wise woman, or in Saxon was Wicca, was later translated to the word witch. Witchcraft, as her healing art was later called, had nothing to do with religion. Witchcraft is not a religious practice. However, many people who were practicing pagans also had an understanding of the healing arts. Now, this was because, as we mentioned in the history of paganism, that these were people who lived in the country. They didn't have the same resources as those who lived in the town. And so they would rely on what they had around them that they could use. Mainly, this included herbs, foods, and handcrafted items. And in understanding of pagan celebrations, they could use the information to understand different causes of illnesses and the proper cures. The craft is easily defined as performing magic. What is magic? The simplest way I can explain magic is the understanding of how certain stimuli, such as scents, colors, herbs, things that you ingest, uh, symbols, um, things that you hear, sounds, words, textures, thoughts, and so on, can affect another person in a physical, mental, spiritual, uh, emotional way. Uh, today, there are many different alternative and homeopathic medical practitioners, and the term witchcraft has now been changed to 
aromatherapy, reflexology, acupressure, herbalism, chromotherapy, feng shui, and many other terms. These would be considered forms of witchcraft. They do not use science to heal, but are a talent. Other than healing, you can use your knowledge of these things to bring good fortune, prosperity, peace, love, creativity, and abundance of other things. And on the flip side, it can also use to be to bring bad luck, negativity, keep people away. There is no such thing as white magic or black magic. It's just magic. It's the person, the practitioner, who uses this knowledge to decide if they're going to use it in a positive or negative fashion. In witchcraft, there is no rule of three. There is no rule saying you cannot use your knowledge to harm others. As I've mentioned, it's not a religion. You simply have to choose how you use your knowledge and understanding. That there is one rule, and that is like begets like. So if you put out a negative energy, negative feelings, negative thoughts, negative behavior, you're going to simply attract more negative feelings, thoughts, and behavior to you. So if that's what witchcraft actually is, then why so much bad press on it? Well, that's simple. When the misinformation and fear of anything that was different from the church's view came to light, the local wise woman, because she had this knowledge, this ability, was the easiest scapegoat. She offered a different view than the church. Most likely, she was a country dweller and also practiced the pagan religions. So those who would go to her for advice and help were the first ones to point the finger. Paranoia was a huge factor in this. The fear that if this person knows how to heal with these things, then obviously she can harm. And that must be why my cow died. Or... Where did she gain this knowledge? In Europe, the god figure was seen as the horned god, and this later was taken as the image of the devil in the Christian church. If the healer practiced pagan religion, it's possible that she had an image of the horned god in her home, which was taken for the evil devil. So, this is where she got this unholy power she gained, this knowledge. And the stories that people came up with through the paranoia and fear and superstition that were fed by the church caused a lot of bigotry and hate for people who had different views. The sad truth is that a lot of that is still around today. So now we kind of understand that paganism is a religion. Witchcraft is a way of life and understanding of things. So where does Wicca fall into this? In 1954, Gerald Gardner published a book called Witchcraft Today, in which he reintroduced the ideas of witchcraft and paganism, combining the two and creating what he termed Wicca. Gardner and a group of others began a religious group drawing the inspiration from classic pagan religions and folklore. Gardner called it Wicca, with one C, using the Saxon term for wise people, and held rituals which contained no Christian symbols, no such as crucifixes, no sermons, absolution hosts. They did not praise the Christian form of evil known as the devil, no mockery of the Christian church at all. Um, Gardner denied any reality of the Burning Times view on witchcraft. He explained Murray's view of the devil in her writings as the stag god and that the focus was on Mother Earth. The religion he set forth was one of love, pleasure, and nature. An adaptation of the seasonal celebrations that early pagans honored 
was created in which he termed the Wheel of the Year. It consisted of eight sacred days that fell on the solstices and equinoxes and the four cross-quarter days between them. Gardner also incorporated the idea of being sky-clad or nude as uh, it is considered to help bring you closer to nature and erases all social distinctions. Where there are still those who practice this way, more often the use of ritual robes uh, for worship is is being found in most practitioners today. The other common practices that Gardner brought about included the creation of sacred space by using herbs, salt, and water that had been specially blessed. The creation of a circle that may or may not be physical to represent the never-ending cycle. The use of ritual tools such as a ritual knife known as a, th a thome, which represented the phallic god, and the chalice or gollop, goblet, which represented the womb of the mother goddess. In a coven, Gardner explained that there would be leaders for worship. Usually, it was a male and female who worked together, and they would represent the god and goddess and were termed as high priest and high priestess. However, the high priestess typically held the most responsibility to the coven. In, her, in the tradition that Gardner had created, there were three levels of understanding, and in many traditions, this remains the same. Each level takes a certain amount of study and responsibility. During the time, they would learn from the high priest and high priestess until they reached the second level, and then they would be in charge of helping educate any new members while they continued to learn. At the second level mark, they held special celebration where they were initiated into the new status. And once they reached the station of high priest or high priestess, again marked by celebration or initiation ceremony, they were welcome to continue on with the coven or move on to create a coven of their own. And when this is done, many times changes are made and a new version or path is then created. In 1960, Raymond Buckland and his wife Rosemary, who were part of Gardner's original coven and initiated by Gardner himself, moved from England to New York. And he adapted Gardner's views and added his own, creating what is now known as Sexa Wiccan, which is another path very similar to Gardnerian Wiccan. And and then there is Alexandrian, which was created by Alex and uh, Maxine Sanders. The name was not in honor of Mr. Sanders, but in reference to ancient Alexandria. Alexandrian tends to be a little more liberal, and it was also adopted by Janet and Stuart Farr, who have written many books on the tradition's practices. So Alexandrian is a very popular liberal uh, path that a lot of people tend to practice. American initiate to both uh, Gardner's and the Alexandrian tradition, Mary Nessick combined the two paths to create a new path known as Al the Algard path. And since both Alexandrian and Gardarian Wicca are very closely related, there wasn't much stretch to combine the two. So those are the earliest forms of Wicca. And so as you see, it, Wicca started in the 50s, in 1950. So it's a very new religion. There is no ancient Wiccans. They do not predate Christianity. They are a very young religious sect. Where most forms of Wicca have adopted the pagan belief duality, the focus on male and female deity equally, there is Dianic tradition, which really isn't necessarily a form of Wicca. It's more pagan focused, and they focus mainly on the goddess aspect. Now, Morgan McFarland and Mark Roberts founded the Dianic tradition with the focus on the goddess. 
However, they did mention the god as a consort in a lesser capacity uh, than the female focus of the goddess. However, Zuzana Budapest took the Dianic tradition and made it even more female focused and created a path known as Feminist Dianic, where she restricts coven members to only female gatherings. They tend to be loosely structured and rarely mention any male counterpart. Feminist Dianics tend to be very liberal women who have had very negative experiences with the male population, and they are very emotionally supportive of each other and tend to be very radical in their views and theories. Uh, where some feminist Dianics have started to include uh, gay males into their practices, many choose not to include any men whatsoever into their worshipping circles. So many feminist Dianics do not consider themselves to be Wiccan at all, meaning they do not follow the Wiccan read, and many feel it's fine to use negative energy if it's for the greater good. And these are simply a few of the many traditions. Each tradition that comes out takes roots from Gardner's original version, and by learning about other traditions, the structure or lack thereof, and how to perform rituals and celebrations, you can adapt these ideas into your own personalized form of spiritualism. By choosing your own path and defining it, you have the freedom to find what suits your situation and personality, as well as your needs and visions of your spiritual self, to create your own feeling spiritual experience. As each person is very different in regards to ideas, thoughts, needs, and expectations, each path can be personalized and defined by these things. And more importantly, once you have a clear understanding on how it all came about, you will be able to clarify your own views of your spiritual self. The history of Wicca is still being created. Wicca has made some very positive strides in the past few years. Many books have been written on the subjects, movies and television shows have shown positive as well as negative views of Wicca, paganism, and witchcraft. People are starting to become more educated on the reality of the religious beliefs, and many myths and falsehoods are starting to come to light and explained. Um, there are groups such as uh, Cups and sites such as A Witch's Voice, which have helped in uh, getting people who are practicing Wicca and other forms of paganism together. There are many online schools and groups that have opened, helping other people who are interested in learning about what this form of spirituality is and the truth behind it. And the history is still in the making. In only the past few years, the military has even acknowledged the religious rights of Wiccans and pagans in erecting a tombstone with a pentagram in honor of a fallen soldier's religion. And though there are still those out there who are still ignorant to what Wicca and paganism is, and hold on to the old superstitions and beliefs that anything different is evil, we are slowly starting to chip away at those old negative connotations and myths that Wicca and paganism is something that is destructive or evil. People don't change overnight, and our world tends to take very slow strides when accepting changes with attitudes. However, we can do our part into letting people know the truth by not hiding, by sharing what we do know, and by helping ourselves by understanding what it is that we are actually practicing, rather than taking things from movies and TV shows and thinking that is the way that it is. Uh, television shows such as Charmed and Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Bewitched, um, uh, The Witches of East End, even uh, the new movie on uh, the Salem and all that, or movies such as The Craft and all of the horror films based like uh, The Blair Witch Project and stuff like that. A lot of people do ask me how I feel that paganism is shown in these things. 
and the truth or the fact that it's very spectacular and very Hollywoodized. And I always like to say, do you ask your doctor how he feels about Grey's Anatomy or ER? Or do you ask uh, your local sheriff on his thoughts and feelings on Criminal Minds and CSI and Hill Street Blues? And most often, you don't. People don't watch those shows and think that's how hospitals actually act and that's how the police officers actually act and that, you know, they're going to solve the crime in 30 minutes or less and it's all action and adventure. If they showed what it was really like being a doctor or a lawyer or a cop and all of the paperwork and all of the time sitting at the desk and working on things that have nothing to do with, you know, the action and adventure of solving the case and chasing down the bad guy, it would be for a very boring television show or movie. And that's how it is with pagan religion and Wicca. If they showed in the movie what it really is like, it would be very boring <laughs> and it wouldn't hold anyone's interest and those shows are for entertainment purpose only they aren't to show the truth they aren't there to show what it's really like they're there to entertain you and that's how you have to look at those you can't look at charmed and say oh i'm going to be battling demons and i'm going to be able to change my eye color without contact lenses and you know run my hand through my hair and go from black hair to white blonde hair in no time at all without the help of the magical miss clairol spell and it, that's not what it's like that's not real life so in order to understand what it is that you're practicing you have to not look at bewitched as a documentary on what witchcraft is actually about it's a tv show it's entertainment it's fiction so you need to just enjoy it for what it is and be entertained but when you go into understanding your history and doing the hard work in researching and writing your papers that we make you do and making your charts and understanding why the color blue is used for healing. If you don't understand that, then it's not going to work for you. There's a lot of hard work and study that goes into practicing any form of religion. It doesn't just happen overnight, and it's not supernatural powers. So in understanding that and learning how to work with the knowledge that you're gaining, it's giving you that foundation, that solid foundation that you need in order to build your own spiritual path. Thank you for joining me, and Mary Part.